It's finally happening. So a couple of months ago I made a video about a dual stage battery indicator for the Game Boy Color here. Pretty much something that functions exactly like you would expect, uh, similar to the Game Boy Advance. So basically you have one power LED color for good battery, and then you have another color for a bad battery. And at the time I said that that was coming soon, uh, but that turned out to be wildly optimistic between uh, some circuit changes, some PCB layout and shape changes, testing, testing with other people, so on and so forth. Uh, it turned into a lot. Um, and I think I've actually gone through three or four iterations of the uh, mod since then. Uh, it took about six overall, but here we are. And uh, I'm going to go over the final install process. So this is how you will get it um, if you were to buy it from me. So uh, it will be on my shop first uh, within the next few days. It'll be announced on Instagram and all that. But uh, within the next couple weeks, I'm also going to be sharing the design files on GitHub, most likely. Um, I'm thinking of moving from just sharing my PCBs on Oshpark and instead putting up the files in GitHub so that I can include like different licenses and stuff. But anyway, you will get a kit like this if you get it from me, which will include the mod itself, so the little flex PCB right here. So that's going to have your LEDs, all the circuitry for driving those. You're going to get a single piece of wire. This is a relatively simple install, so two solder points, one wire. And then you will get these two little plastic nubbins right here. And so what these are, are improvised light pipes, essentially. So on the Game Boy Advance, for example, you would have uh, an actual like hard plastic light pipe that is meant to channel the light from your power LEDs up uh, through the shell. So, and it kind of diffuses it a bit. Same kind of concept here. Uh, can't really find ones in the appropriate shape and certainly not ones to fit uh, every uh, shell between OEM and you know the various aftermarket ones. So basically took some fiber optic tubing and that ends up working pretty well. So there's two sizes here. We'll kind of get into that in a minute, but let's go ahead and take this apart and start the install. Now that the Game Boy Color has been extricated from its shell and we're just left with the bare motherboard, we can go ahead and start going over what this install entails. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is you'll see up here in the top left of the front side of the board, we have the original power LED. This is just like a standard, I think it's three or four millimeter um, red LED. Uh, obviously we do not want that because this is going to replace it um, with the two LEDs on here. So I have my soldering iron turned on and heating up. And there's a couple ways that you could actually go about this. So the simpler way, I would say, um, if you're not super adept at soldering or if you don't have a good solder sucker like this, would be to take a pair of flush cutters, like these right here, kind of snip the LED off. And then since the, the leads are no longer gonna be attached, you could kind of come to the backside here and then heat up the leads with your soldering iron, melt them independently, pull them out. Uh, pretty simple. I don't necessarily like doing that. Uh, there's always this, the chance that like, if you do um, clip it like that, something might break. Uh, you might like lift the pad or something. You know, it's pretty unlikely, but it could happen. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is first I'm going to apply, clean off my iron. First I'm going to apply a bit more solder to each of the joints here just so it's nice and fresh. And then take the solder sucker in, heat each joint one at a time, and just kind of suck that off. So that one looks nice and clean. We're gonna go in for the other one. Still a little bit left there. Still a little bit left there. Uh, it might be close enough. Let's flip it around and see if we can just kind of wiggle this out. Now that's pretty stubborn still. 
Let's try hitting it with some flux. So just a dab right onto both of the leads there. Uh, make sure that our sucker is cleared out. Come back in. Heat the joint. Suck it off. That one looks good. That one. Not quite. All right, that looks good now. Flip it back around. Give it a wiggle. Yep, and there we go. So it came free just like that. No damage whatsoever. You can see that the pads there are in good shape. And then if we flip it around, we can see that the pads on the other side where it actually solders in are also in good shape. So now we can proceed to install the mod. Um, and before we actually proceed with this, I'm going to show just how it slots in. So basically it's going to go where the old LED was. And then with this big pad right here, it's going to line up with this ground pin for the XT port. And then for this smaller pad in the corner here, it's going to line up with the five volt rail on the EXT port. Uh, so that provides power and ground connections and then the battery connection is going to come from the wire. But before we solder that up, it's always a good idea to add a little bit of extra solder to the legs here that we're going to solder to. So this would be our 5 volts. And then this is going to be ground. And this is going to make it a lot easier to solder this in place. And so there are actually going to be two slightly different versions of this mod at the beginning. So there's going to be one that has just a kind of flat uh, pad on the surface here for the battery. Uh, there is another one that will not be showing up eventually. That is, there's actually a hole there, so it's basically a large via. Uh, and for that reason, it's a smart idea to go ahead and insulate the motherboard behind the mod with some Kapton tape. And so while it's not strictly necessary in this case, I'm going to do it anyway just to show where it goes and, you know, kind of do best practices. So we'll just put it right there. All right. Now, take the PCB, line it up. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of flux on here just so I don't have to fight to get this to flow onto the pad and wet it. And just as always, you want to heat up both the pad and the pin itself. So we're going to come in here on the ground first, right in there, get the solder to flow. All right, we see it's, uh, it's flowing nicely onto that pad. Now we're going to come into 5 volts right here. Same thing onto the pin and the pad at the same time. And it's hard to see. But, yeah, we can see that that one is also making a solid connection. So we have both, both of those connected nicely. So now what we're going to do is the final phase of the actual PCB installation. So we're going to tin up the battery pad up here. It's going to be labeled VCC uh, because that corresponds to where on the motherboard it's going to be run. We will take our single wire and flip this around, tack this wire into place. Just like so. And then we need to figure out where this is going to run. And so there's really only one option in this case. And as it's labeled VCC over here, you can kind of guess that it's gonna be going to one of these vias here that is labeled VCC. So this is essentially uh, directly connected, well not quite directly, to the positive battery terminal, but only when the switch is in the on position. So you don't have to worry about um, the board being fed with positive voltage when the system is off, it's only gonna be connected when that switch is flipped. Uh, and that makes sure everything is nice and safe. So luckily these vias are pretty big, um, so they're not too hard to solder to, but we're gonna do just a little bit of surface prep here. This isn't strictly necessary, but I find that it helps. So kind of hit 
that via with a fiberglass scratch pen just a little bit. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to stick the other end of the wire right in there. Just like that. Hit it with a little bit of flux. You really don't need a whole lot. And then, again, clean the iron. It's always good to have a clean iron when you're doing this stuff. Get a little bit of solder on the end and then introduce that bead right into the joint where the wire goes into the via. And yeah, that looks good. So you can see that the solder has flooded that via nicely. It's sticking to the wire. And we're good to go on this side. Through the power of editing, I've cleared away the motherboard and my camera settings have already changed. But who cares? So I mentioned the shell and there's really only one thing that we have to do here. This was the vast majority of the mod installation. And this brings us to the light pipe. So like I mentioned before, it comes with two sizes and that's to accommodate the different range of shells that you might find. So OEM fits the larger one quite well. So this is a four millimeter light pipe. Aftermarket ones like Funny Playing or Cloud Game Store uh, may actually work better with this smaller three millimeter one. Uh, it really kind of depends. And I know for a fact actually that OEM shell trimmed for Q5 will fit the three millimeter more simply because half of this uh, LED well has been trimmed away and this doesn't really sit in there anymore. Uh, but this one can like kind of rest between the screen and the, the wall. So all we have to do here is take a pair of tweezers with our light pipe, the four millimeter in this case, because we are putting it into an OEM shell. And then gingerly place it into this LED well. And let's make sure it's lined up. Oh, it's getting away from me. It's very slippery. One moment. There it is. Take it. There, it is hard to get the right angle on this, and it's not very grippy at all. Possibly the touchiest part of this entire thing. Uh... There we go. Nice. There it is. And that should stay in pretty well just by the, the magic of friction. So now what we're going to do is we're going to button this all up um, just a little bit and then do some functionality testing. So we have the motherboard installed again, we have the screen set up, and the reason I haven't buttoned this up completely is because I just want to demonstrate the functionality here. So I have my benchtop power supply set up here, and I'm going to set this to, we'll go with like 2.6 volts right now. I'm going to go ahead and clip this to the Game Boy, and then we're going to find out, first of all, like if this works, and if it works, we're going to show the good to bad functionality. So power supply on, Game Boy on. And yeah, so you see we have a nicely diffused like ice blue LED right there. That is the color that I chose for a good battery and at 2.6 volts that is exactly what we would expect to see. So let's go ahead and drop this down. All right. There we go. So we got down to 2.1 volts and it triggered the low battery. So instead of blue, it is a purple color, which I think is quite nice. And so if we were to raise this back up to 2.4, you can see the good battery color lit back up. So everything is good. So we can button this up and then discuss some numbers of it.
There we are. Had to pop it back open again. Uh, nothing to do with the mod, but the forgot to install the power switch, but now we're good. So, moment of truth on batteries. Nice. Let's see if we have some janky batteries real quick, just to see if we can get that low battery indicator to appear. Let's see, I'll pop a flash cartridge in here. Let's see what happens. These ones might be good too, actually. Nuts. Anyway, so there it is. So you might have some questions about specifics, specific numbers um, regarding how long will the Game Boy stay on once the low battery indicator turns on. And to be perfectly honest, that depends. Um, and it depends quite a bit. It depends on what other mods you have in here. It depends on what batteries you're using. It depends on what brand those batteries are, what capacity, uh, what specific chemistry they use, etc. And so kind of the guiding principle here was, um, even though I installed it in an OEM um, shell with OEM screen today, uh, the idea was to calibrate basically the, the low battery times for something like the, the Q5, dis Q5 display, the Cloud Game Store display, basically any of the backlit displays. Um, and then for batteries, it specifically targets... NIM rechargeables, um, and so in this case, I really like the IKEA Lotta batteries. I also found that uh, the various, some of the various energizers worked pretty well. Rayovac was kind of odd behaving. Uh, the the low battery would turn on about halfway through the lifespan of the battery, so it's unfortunately not super helpful there. Uh, although it does technically work. As for specific numbers, so all these numbers are with a Q5 kit, and I will throw them up on the screen as well. So with the 2450 milliamp hour uh, IKEA Lattas with a Q5 screen, you get about 13, 10 to 13 minutes of uh, warning at highest brightness when the, the bad battery indicator goes on. At lowest brightness of those same batteries, you're going to get about 20. And then for the various energizers, it depends. I have some old crappy, in fact, these might be the ones, uh, 1400 milliamp hour ones where you get about a minute of warning, but then there were some uh, 2500 milliamp hour ones where you get 4 to 10, depending on brightness, and then some 2000 milliamp hours where you actually get quite a bit. You get around 25 minutes um, on both low and high brightness. Um, from when the low battery indicator turns on to the Game Boy itself shutting off. Uh, so overall, with uh, most of the batteries that I tested, um, and of course there's other brands and other capacities out there, even of, you know, there's even uh, a lower capacity for the IKEA ones, uh, it's going to vary. Um, and it may not work in every case, um, but that's that's kind of the breaks. It's, it's a balancing act between making sure that it... Um, it lasts for long enough for you to have sufficient warning to save your game, what have you, um, versus getting desensitized, essentially, when it turns on way too early, you know, like two hours before your Game Boy dies, and then you're like, you don't actually have any idea. But that is basically it. Um, this will be in available in the coming days, probably this Sunday, although who knows when this video will actually air. And, uh, of course, links will be in the description. I will also link to the my testing numbers. Yeah, that's basically it. See ya.